You guys are going to hear me talk a lot over the coming months about the modern entrepreneur, the entrepreneur who is resilient and has the mindset and the capacity and skill set to actually regulate a dysregulated nervous system. You're going to hear what I mean by that today in order to propel you into more financial freedom. And you're also going to hear today how I define financial freedom, and it may not be what you're initially thinking. I hope you guys enjoy this episode and really the direction I'm going with this podcast and really putting together my business expertise and my journey as an entrepreneur over the past couple of years and being able to marry that with my scientific background, clinical background as a pharmacist, and the personal breakthroughs I've had because of being able to hone in inwardly so that I can lean in outwardly. So again, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Hey friend, Melissa Hinault here with the Burnout to All Out podcast. I'm a former multiple six-figure executive corporate burnout, feeling stuck in the life I built for myself. But using my corporate skills, I took to the internet and have built multiple six and seven-figure businesses, showing others how they can build a life they love. Now on this podcast, I share stories of being an entrepreneur, a mom to my three amazing kids, and wife to my wonderful and supportive husband who supports all my wild and crazy dreams. My journey is taking grit and persistence and belief. And believe me, I'm still a work in progress that you may witness in real time. Whether it's in our free burnout to all out Facebook community or inside my mastermind or even in my coaching programs or maybe just right here on the podcast. I'm laughing and I'm crying with you. I've become a serial entrepreneur with a passion to inspire more burnouts, to take the leap of faith and go all out and live out their dreams. Consider me your mentor in your head and on the go. So let's get started. You guys, happy Tuesday. No, it's Wednesday. (laughs) Happy Wednesday. I am coming out of the fog of a nine-day launch series that's been absolutely amazing, celebrating our fourth six-figure launch this year, which is just amazing. But it got me thinking about the term financial freedom. And that's actually what I'm going to talk about today on this podcast episode. I'm going to be talking about financial freedom in a really unconventional way in the journey that I've been on to pursue it over the past couple of years, right? It's going to be a fun episode for those of you who are joining me live or catching this on the podcast later. But here's the thing. There's this whole buzz with the term financial freedom. What does that term mean to you? I know for me personally, the term financial freedom has evolved over the years for me from early on thinking in college, it was just having a lot of money, right? To then having a lot of money in corporate, but not having time freedom and redefining what financial freedom was in relevance to time freedom. And now I've come full circle and really come up with a totally new equation for what financial freedom truly means to me. So I hope that this episode resonates with you. Um, We're going to be talking today about my definition of it, and then I'm going to talk about the 10 traits of financially free humans. And as you're listening in, I'd love for you, especially if you're listening live, share with me like which of these traits resonate with you, which of them rub with you, maybe which ones do you need to lean into to become a more financially free human, right? So I'm really excited about this. So let's get into it. The first thing is what financial freedom to Melissa Hinault is not, okay? What financial freedom is not to me is how much money is in your bank account, Okay. It's not how much money is in your bank account. Financial freedom is about developing a deep primal trust in life. Okay. Follow me on my journey with this for just a couple of minutes. It's that you know that your needs are always being met, right? 
and that you're always having a grateful heart for what you do actually have. Okay. And this energy propels you forward, right? And creates the financial freedom and mindset that you have and where the money flows, right? Here's the thing I want to talk about is fear. The big word fear. And we're going to talk about this fear. You cannot have fear of not having enough money and still feel financially free. Okay. You cannot have fear of not having enough money and still feel financially free. So there's no place for fear of money in a body that feels and experiences financial freedom. Let me unpack this for you a little bit. And I want to start with asking you a question. Do you have gratitude for what you already have, right? Do you have gratitude for what you already have? Are your needs already met? In reality, have your needs always been met? Have your needs always been met? See, when my mind starts to slip into a fear-based mentality, right? Oh my gosh, you know, we're about to open cart for this launch. Are we going to make the revenue that's going to make the goal that we want for the year? Is the money going to come? That is fear, right? Oh my gosh. Well, what is that fear for? I check myself very quickly and I didn't used to be able to do this. And I, there'll be a whole nother podcast episode, a couple of them around this and the mindset shift that we can focus on, right? But when my mind starts to slip into fear, fear of not succeeding, fear of not having the money, I have to check myself and say, what are you fearful of? What are you afraid of? Is there a roof over your head? Yes. Is my family fed? Yes. Am I healthy? Yes. Have I ever truly been in desperation where my human needs have not been met? The reality is no. The universe has always provided, right? It is our primal brain that gets us into this fear, right? Because of the whole fear-based mentality and protection and really protecting you from being upset from failure, right? That's a whole nother conversation. But the reality is I check myself and say, my needs have always been met. And the reality is I always show up. And so does the money. And so we have to literally punch fear in the face, recognize it when your mind starts to go in that direction in order to live a life of financial freedom. We have to recognize when we're going into a fear-based mentality because there's no place for fear of money in a body that experiences true financial freedom. So let's unpack this a little further, right? Financial freedom can be seen as be one who's totally liberated of fear of lack, a fear of lack and shifted into the infinite of capacity and opportunity. Guys, when I harnessed this power over three years ago, my entire world changed When I finally realized and was enlightened that there was unlimited opportunity for me, my world changed. And so did my mindset, so did my energy, and so did my income. I'll never forget when I'd made the shift out of the fear-based mentality, COVID had hit, the schools had shut down, I'd never made more than $20,000 in a month, and I looked at my husband and I said, I'm going to make $70,000 this month. And the reason I was going to make $70,000 that month was because the schools had shut down and our kids needed to be put in private school in order to continue their education without them coming into the house, all three of them, not a cheap bill. But I would settle for nothing less. And I'd already done the inner work to know that there was infinite and abundant opportunity for me to receive 
if I was open to it and not fearful that it wasn't available to me, that my needs wouldn't be met. The world in general doesn't tap into this superpower. You may live with one who thinks from a scarcity mindset and doesn't believe in infinite capacity. When I said this to my husband, he actually laughed and he wasn't trying to be rude, but he couldn't believe me. You see, he was coming from the same scarce mentality that we'd both grown up in, that it wasn't possible. It wasn't figure outable. That's not the way business works. That's not how money is made. Well, I'm here to tell you that I made $70,000 that month. I put my kids in private school and paid cash, and they were in that school for the entire year, which actually allowed them to get a great education and for me to focus in on my business and scale it beyond my wildest dreams, right? Okay, gang, we need to take a quick hydration break. So grab your drink of choice. And as you rehydrate, I'll give you the lowdown on my free LinkedIn lead gen masterclass. If you feel like you're screaming into the void when you post content on Facebook or Instagram, struggling to find a sustainable and scalable lead generation process that sticks, and you just want someone who's been there and done that to reveal their secrets then it's critical that you register to save your spot ASAP. During this live masterclass, you'll get to steal the exact strategy I used to scale my income from $0 to 1 million in just 19 months without spending a fortune on ads or suffering from burnout. Simply check out the show notes of the podcast episode for the link to register for your free spot in the LinkedIn Lead Gen Masterclass. And don't worry, Even if you miss a couple of days or you can't make it to all the training sessions, we'll deliver the replays directly into your inbox daily so you can watch them on your own time. All you have to do is make sure you sign up for the masterclass before registration ends. So here's the thing. Before I go further, financial freedom from my perspective does not necessarily, and I want to be clear about this, it doesn't mean excessive more than you know what to do with amounts of money. That's not what financial freedom is. I have seen people and worked with people who still live in a lack mentality and are making lots of money, but they're still chasing the carrot and always concerned that the money won't last. They're operating from a dysregulated nervous system who is fearful that it won't always be available to them, which by the way, wreaks havoc on their bodies. They also tend to be the unhealthy humans who have chronic illnesses. They have plenty of money in the bank account, but they're not healthy because they still are not sure that it's always going to be available to them. So just because you have more money than you know what to do with is not true freedom of finances, is it? We can't be true in our freedom of finances if we're fearful it will always be there. So when I catch myself sliding into this fear, I now recognize it and I can pull myself out of it way more effectively than I could three years ago. And if you go back to my very first podcast episode, you will know I grew up in poverty. I grew up with a mother who worked three jobs and could barely make ends meet, right? I was raised in a scarcity place. My innate human genetic code is to fear that the money won't be there. So I constantly have to redirect my mindset to nourish my nervous system and regulate my nervous system and show up as my highest self. When I catch myself in this fear, I now recognize it. And I, you have to know that your thoughts, they become your words. And what happens from there? Your words become your action. And what happens with action is your reality. When you or when I catch myself thinking, oh no, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Is there going to be enough? I'm not sure there's going to be enough. You have to catch yourself because your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions and you will literally create the reality you're concerned about. We have to catch and redirect our thoughts to the abundant opportunity. See it, feel it, taste it, 
have visualizations of it, right? So here's my simple equation of financial freedom. And that is all of your needs met plus a regulated nervous system equals financial freedom. Because see, you can have all of your needs met, but if your nervous system is dysregulated from a fear-based space, you're incredibly unhealthy in physicality and mentality. And it wreaks havoc on your body. It means being rest assured, no matter what comes your way, you can navigate the unexpected with ease and certainty, whether it's a car repair, a broken down refrigerator, right? Because mine is on the fritz and it's leaking water on the floor and it ain't a cheap refrigerator. Can you fix it? And move on. Can you navigate the unexpected? This doesn't mean that you have so much money you don't know where to put it. Financial freedom is the ease to navigate and be okay. Okay, you know, okay, world, I got this. Don't come at me too hard, but I got this. I can handle what you bring my way and I can roll with it. And I am confident and I am certain that my needs are met. This alignment creates true financial freedom. From my perspective, you can't be free from your finances if your mental state is still stuck in a lack space. And so you guys are going to hear me speak a lot to this this year as I'm shifting into this focus of the modern entrepreneur and how we can be successful as modern entrepreneurs with so much coming at us from every angle and orifice of life and technology and business. So here's the thing is the pressure stacks as a successful business person. And this comes from years of training as a doctorate in pharmacy. And I think this is where it's kind of all coming together for me. I'm really enjoying learning about the nervous system again and actually how we can create resiliency in it as an entrepreneur to actually become even better entrepreneurs, right? This is like, I feel like the world And the universe has put me through what I've gone through and the experiences to be where I am today to talk about this. So as the pressure stacks as a successful entrepreneur, your nervous system holds more and more. You're the solopreneur, then you hire a couple of people, revenue starts coming in, big life, big challenges, my friend, right? And the resiliency and capacity to recognize and manage and work through this is a skill set. I am here to tell you going from zero to a million in revenue in 19 months may sound sexy on the outside, but wreaked havoc on my nervous system on the inside. I went from me to eight staff members. I went from me to 100 clients. I went from me to massive operating revenue that I was payroll to manage, a tax bracket I'd never seen, challenges I'd never even imagined to manage. That, my friend, can wreak havoc on your nervous system. And again, we're going to do many podcasts on this. I can't wait. I'm excited. But you get to a place where you're like, wow, (laughs) wow, I'm holding a lot right now. And my nervous system is dysregulated. Heart rate's up. Respirations are up. Heart rate variability is not nearly as resilient. If I'm talking some statistics that make no sense to you, that's okay. I'll do another podcast on it, right? But here's the cool thing. Dysregulation is natural in growth phases. So I'm going to say that one more time. Dysregulation in your nervous system is natural When you are going through growth, right? It's not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, if you are not going through some dysregulation, you're probably not growing. If you're completely comfortable and not experiencing occasional dysregulation, you're not growing. But it's a matter of how you manage that dysregulation and work through it and cope with it to become more resilient. Because 
two to three years ago, and even through corporate and all the stress I lived there, I wasn't coached on how to manage the stress I was taking on going from a young employee to a director taking on a tremendous amount of responsibility, working with men who were twice my age and I was in their role with two babies at home. My nervous system was a wreck and I had no idea how to manage it. Here's the thing. I was just going through dysregulation because I was going through hyper growth in my career. I wish I'd known what I know now about how to manage it. And again, I'm going down in a rabbit hole that we're going to talk more about in future episodes. But what I want to hit on here before I dive into traits of those who are financially free is that coping with a dysregulated nervous system is what allows us to be financially free. And it's going to be one of the 10 topics I talk about in traits of the financially free is to be able to recognize the dysregulation and pull yourself out of it, right? And so it's careful not to let this state pull you into fear. So when you're going through hyper growth, when your business is growing, when you're making decisions you've never had to make before, when you're learning technology you've never had to play with before, your nervous system can take you into a lack of fear-based mentality and say, oh my gosh, I don't know anything about this. I'm not worthy of this. I can't go in that direction. And it can hold entrepreneurs back for sake of fear. But the modern entrepreneur recognizes and says, okay, world, I'm holding a lot right now and I feel it. This is a lot, but I'm recognizing it and I'm going through growth. And this is familiar It's uncomfortable, but I'm becoming familiar with this uncomfortable feeling. And now I'm going to work through some coping mechanisms to regulate back and level set my baseline so that I can create a new baseline of ability to navigate growth and change. You hear me? So at every level as an entrepreneur, your nervous system is going to be challenged. It's going to be dysregulated. What separates the uber successful from not are those who are able to navigate it, regulate it, and raise their threshold for the challenge next time, to recognize it with familiarity next time, and have modalities to bring it back down. For any of you guys who followed my journey last week, I know that I know that I know that when we go through these nine-day launches, my body's under a lot of stress. I now monitor it with my whoop strap. If you want details, message me. I love this company. And so I now have coping skills during those nine days as I'm monitoring my heart rate, as I'm monitoring my autonomic nervous system, the data is there. And I'm use breath work. I use meditation. I use sleep. I use joy and play to bring it back down. I knew in the middle of launch, okay, world, I'm holding a lot. I'm holding a lot of responsibility right now. I am the face of this company. I have payroll and revenue hinging on my performance on screen, but that's okay. I feel it and I recognize it. And I'm going to work through this. And now I know I can handle this. See, for me, I've been through enough of these to recognize, prepare, and strategize to keep it more regulated. Okay. All right. So, and that goes to the mindset too during the week. Oh my gosh, are the numbers going to be what we want? Are people going to want to join us? Like that money mindset, you catch yourself. And you pull yourself into abundance. When you catch yourself going down the scarcity drain, that's a skill set to recognize it and redirect. Recognize it, redirect. Okay, so let's jump into some traits of someone who is financially free. There's 10 of them, okay? I want to talk through them. Number one is determination, okay? Determination, it's all or nothing for those who are financially free. 
right? All or nothing. They're willing to take risks and bet on themselves and face their darkest head on their darkness. They are willing to face their darkness head on. They're able to just go after it, right? It's really interesting. The uncanny amount of entrepreneurs, there's been data out to prove this, that had learning disabilities growing up. And some of the data behind it really speaks to the fact that those who had learning disabilities or disadvantage growing up, that they had to learn to work harder, to be more determined to get the same results. Also listen to a podcast episode lately that there's an uncanny amount of immigrant families who are entrepreneurs. And, you know, what I've gathered from this is that if you go through some hardship or you have to have some grit to succeed compared to your peers, you began to build the determination muscle. You are more determined than most. Number two, resiliency. This goes back to what I was just on a massive soapbox about. They have a regulated nervous system to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Have any of you ever seen Tony Robbins get ready for one of his big events? I mean, he has a cold plunge at his house, right? He's jumping on the trampoline before he goes on stage. Um, There's all these coping mechanisms that these uber successful people who have a lot of pressure on themselves to show up, that they are very, very knowledgeable about what's going on in their autonomic nervous system. And they're able to create resiliency in their nervous system and manage the pressure and manage the risk. If you look around at the most successful people around you, they've been able to navigate risk. They've been able to navigate pressure. One could argue that they've had the resiliency and ability to regulate their nervous system and not crumble under pressure. They're also comfortable in living on the edge and pushing through every obstacle with a brave heart. Let me give you some tips on resiliency. I'm constantly telling people one of the ways I keep my resting heart rate so low is I do endurance running. If my heart can adapt to high stress on exercise, it's conditioning my heart to adapt to high stress in business. If you're an entrepreneur and you are not fit, shame on you. If you are an entrepreneur and you are not treating your health and your heart with the attention that you are treating your business, shame on you. You and your physicality are the most important and valuable asset in the business. And I can guarantee you your ability to adapt, respond, and actually show up as a healthy human is going to be significantly higher when you take time to take care of yourself physically, with movement, and through nourishment. Other tips on conditioning for resiliency, cold plunges. Yes, when you put your body under intense change and stress and work through deep breaths, this could be a whole nother episode, but there's so many things that are going on with your nervous system, with your hormones, with your metabolism. And if you don't have a cold plunge, which I don't, I actually only cold plunge in the winter with my pool. I end every morning with a ridiculously cold shower. (laughs) Yes. It is creating resiliency in my body and it's actually liberating, right? Other things you can do are breath work. During my launch this past week, I mean, in the middle of the day, we would be crazy busy and I would lay on my couch and do a 22 minute breath work session, deep breaths, oxygenate my body, short guided meditation to down regulate, to bring my autonomic nervous system back into regulation, right? Okay. Another category is clarity. Clarity. Understanding your personal why in pursuit of financial freedom. Why are you doing this? What I see sometimes is entrepreneurs have a clear why, and then they attain that first clear why, and they get lost in their journey and their business plateaus because they've actually lost the dream. 
They've actually lost the dream because they attained their first dream and they don't have the capacity to dream further, dream bigger, know that they're capable and made for more, right? So I know for me, every year I have to write new goals in order to keep me moving. My whys change every year. My first whys in entrepreneurship were to get me out of corporate, right? My second whys were to build a phenomenal pool in the backyard. My third why, or one of many whys this past year, was to invest in property to build a mountain home. That has box has been checked and the year isn't over. So now I have a new goal. We've bought the land. Now I'm, I'm working towards creating enough revenue to build the home on the mountain. We're looking at blueprints. We're looking at floor plans to make it a reality. Guys, I didn't just stop this year when I said, check, bought the land. Instead, I'm like, okay, new goal. Where are we headed now? You have to have a visceral why to what you're doing so that you will go through a brick wall to make it happen. You lean into that determination that we talked about a minute ago. So what is the driving force behind your desire to do more? Are you looking to break generational cycles? Are you looking to give your children a better life? Are you looking to prove worthiness or capability? I've been there. When my husband laughed at me shooting for a goal of $70,000, I was like, okay, not only am I going to prove you wrong, I'm going to double down on that. And the next month we did $250,000 right? Now he's a believer. (laughs) It doesn't matter what your why is, but it needs to be important to you and it may evolve and change. And that's okay. It needs to change. You need to check in with yourself. This is your reality check. Have you already hit your goals? You need to dream bigger. You're complacent. Let's go for something else. That's why you're stagnant, right? Okay. The next one is personal responsibility. They understand that it's solely their personal responsibility to create the financial freedom. While others can support their path, only they can do the work. They are not a victim of life and they understand they are the ones who created any scarcity and they are the ones that need to do the work to master financial freedom by working through their mindset on abundance. If you feel like you are a victim right now, that is on you. That is your mentality. And you will live in that scarcity place and you will live a victim throughout your life, right? It will be your story. I have a really hard time having sympathy and compassion for people who have a sob story about why they're in their particular situation. I'm like, the way I grew up, And even today who tell me they don't have time, right? I've got three little kids. I run multiple businesses. I laugh. It is your personal responsibility, your situation, where you are today. That's on you. I did a podcast, I think about this a while ago, even with people in careers that they don't like or a life they don't enjoy. I hate to tell you, but that's on you. That is your story and it is your choice to rewrite a new chapter and take radical action, radical personal responsibility. And it probably starts with what's between your own ears. Okay, grateful, gratitude. They're grateful for the life they already have. Can you pause and look around and be grateful for what you have? Sometimes I get busy thinking about the next thing, right? Here we are, successful launch, and I'm already moving on. We have a live event next week, and I'm like, okay, we got to do this, we got to do this. I had to catch myself and say, Melissa, pause. Gratitude. You've had a six figure launch. Many people dream of doing that. It's the fourth one you've done this year. Can you just pause and be grateful for that? Listen, at every level, it happens. I'm here to tell you whether it's celebrating your first $100 sale or your first six-figure launch or your first million-dollar year, 
You could catch yourself going to the next carrot before stopping and being grateful for what you have today, right? So if you catch yourself living in the future, if you catch yourself spending too much time thinking about the next thing that you want or need or have to have or have to attain, catch yourself. It's okay to dream. I've already talked about having bigger dreams and a future and a new why, but are you pausing to be grateful for the moment? Are you grateful for what you have? And if you're not, and you're actually playing into victimhood, your life will not change. You will continue to live in that space, right? Things change when you recognize you're the creator and can find beauty in what you have already created. Okay, this brings me to the next one, which is present. So we talked about grateful, but being present and living in the fully in the now. I've already talked about this a little bit, but directing your energy inwards to what is real and alive and in front of you. There's so many opportunities that are missed at that moment in time because people are not present when it happens. I can give you some examples of this. Parents working on their phones when their kids are around them. You guys would be wildly surprised to know that I don't have my work email on my phone on purpose. I do not have my Slack channel app on my phone on purpose. Two years ago, I realized it was toxic because us entrepreneurs, we love our businesses. We love our families, but we love our businesses. If I'm out for ice cream with my kids, I don't want to be tempted to check my email, no matter what it is, because God forbid it's a fire drill and I see it and now I'm distracted and I'm irritated when my kids want my attention. When the miracle was the moment I was supposed to have with them not being distracted by work. The miracles are being present in the moment. Okay. Celebration. They celebrate every little win with others and with themselves. It goes back to what I talked about a minute ago when we are closed the doors to our academy and now I'm moving on. Right. And my husband's like, well, we need to celebrate this launch tonight. Like you guys crushed it. I'm like, oh yeah, we do. Right. I'm already on to the next thing. I am a work in progress. Right. I'm telling you some things that I'm having to implement myself. Right. But choose to be in places with other people who are also celebrating life and value, play, and joy. Are you strategic about the people you spend your time with and learn from? I'm always looking to upgrade my DNA in my business and in health. I pay. We laugh about this in our mastermind. We pay for our friends. I invest to be at the table with some of the most amazing humans on the planet that inspire me daily to be a better person, to be a better business owner. I invested in a nutritional mastermind this year to make sure I was investing not only in my business, but in my health and my mindset. I've invested in an energetics coach. We'll be together next Monday. Grounded. So another one is they brought consciousness into the depths of their pain and held a light there to become free of their fears and that they're not enough. They've done the inner work. And I am working on that to this day. I was really cracked open three years ago with my first one on one coach and realized the amount of inner work that needed to be done. I don't hide, I don't hide the depths of my pain anymore. I shine a light on it, honor it, let it out. Right. But it's also not my excuse. And it doesn't make me a victim. Very different. Two more. Progressive. Okay? Progressive. They embrace all cycles of change. We understand, those of us who are financially free, they understand that healing is not linear. Either healing is not linear and our bank accounts and business are not linear. It's not linear, right? You know, I have become very comfortable in the ebbs and flows again, of my nervous system and being able to manage it. 
the ebbs and flows in my business. I've learned to create a nice cushion in my bank account to manage the ebbs and flows. It's not linear and that's okay. And then the last one is focused. So they're focused on their development professionally, but also inwardly. And I spoke to this a little bit a minute ago when I talked about who's supporting me, right? I have a business coach. I have a spiritual coach. I work on focusing inwardly with meditation, but I'm also listening to podcasts and learning about business growth development. And I know that financial freedom is a side effect of true sovereignty and liberation from pain, suffering, and fear. I'm going to say that one more time. Financial freedom is a side effect. It's a side effect of true sovereignty and liberation from pain, suffering, and fear. That's where the money flows. That's where the freedom flows. Okay. Last thing, traits of people who are stuck in scarcity. I'm going to read these off and I want you to think through what buckets do you need to work on? What buckets are you doing really good at? Where are you? So traits of those stuck in scarcity, victimhood. Are you telling yourself the story over and over? Do you love to tell your story? Do you love when you, do you have those friends or maybe it's you when you sit down and you have the sob story? You want everybody to feel sorry for your situation right now? Stop. Stop. You're going to continue living it. You're sucking up all the energy from everyone. We have this deal in our our previous mastermind. You get two minutes. You get a one buddy for two minutes that you can bitch to, that you can complain to, that you can whine to, and you can cry to for two minutes. And then it's done and out. And let's move forward with it. It's not your story. Again, victimhood obsessed with their story. I already really talked about that. Constantly seeing obstacles in your life. Do you always have an excuse for why you're not successful? Do you always have an excuse for why you haven't started? Guys, that's on you. Traits of being stuck in scarcity, not fully committed. Do you have your toe halfway in? Is that your excuse for not being successful? Oh, well, I'm not fully trying. I'm only partially trying right? That's your cop-out. Remember what we talked about in the beginning with the successful financially free? They're all in, 100% determined. They're committed. They've not found safety in their bodies. This is a big one, right? That fear, that money mindset fear, the fear and lack of success, that makes you not comfortable and safe in your body. And if you're not comfortable and safe in your body, you cannot progress. Looking for quick fixes, which really means not willing to do the work. If you want the scarcity to stop, you have to also be grateful for what you have today. So those who aren't grateful for what they have today are going to have a hard time moving forward because they're living in the scarcity mindset, right? Okay, so where are you guys in this cycle? Where do you need to lean in? And I'm curious. Come follow me on social. Come let me know if you watch this live. Would love to know if you're watching us on LinkedIn. Any of this resonate with you? Anything you need to lean into? Any aha moments that you had? Stay tuned for more topics as I'm really leaning in this, the back half of this year and into 2023, talking about the modern entrepreneur. So stay tuned for more. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Thanks for listening to the Burnout to All Out podcast. For free resources, materials, or information on my coaching services, go ahead over to livethefreelife.co. That's livethefreelife.co. Or check out our Facebook community at Burnout to All Out. And make sure you follow Burnout to All Out on Spotify and subscribe to iTunes. And it would truly mean the world to me if you paused for just a second, gave me that five-star review of the show, and be sure to share this episode with any burnouts you think would be inspired to go all out after hearing this episode.